Good evening, Minister, Sirs, ladies and gentlemen. Victor Hugo wrote in Les Miserables, great perils have this fine characteristic that they bring to light a fraternity of strangers. Welcome. I'm Stuart Hill. I've led and managed hundreds of men and women in my 18 years as an army officer. I suffered a traumatic brain injury three years ago. I've had to rebuild my life. Over the course of my career, I've met many leaders of all ages and ability. An honor to meet many, discomforting to experience a few. I want to take you back to the 4th of July, 2009. I'm not celebrating American Independence Day, partly because I'm British, but mainly as I'm leading my company of 160 men and two women in a fight against the Taliban as part of the largest British ground offensive operation in Afghanistan. Eight hours later, medics were battling to save my life as I'm being evacuated by helicopter. I then spent two and a half years in brain rehabilitation. And because of my brain impairments that I have, I was discharged from the army in March this year and it has restricted my options for future employment and possible careers. So the end of last year, the beginning of this year, with only a few months to my discharge, I really didn't know what I was going to do in work, in work terms. And so I volunteered for a West End production or a West End play. So I took part in a West End play called The Two Worlds of Charlie F. And it was through that experience that I realized that I still had much to offer with my skills and experience of leadership and also my new skills now of overcoming adversity, of overcoming the difficulties, the emotional difficulties associated with a traumatic injury. So I chose to talk about leadership, inspiration and motivation. So I could stand here and I could talk about the various skills, traits, techniques involved in leadership or successful leadership, how our behaviour helps or hinders an organisation in reaching its objectives, how negative thinking can have a profound impact on the individual, the team and the task, how our personal needs influence our motivation. The greatest potential for the future does not necessarily lie in training those who are currently in employment. It's with the next generation of leaders. The greatest impact on the competitiveness of our country does not necessarily lie in spending vast amounts of training on those currently in employment. It is with the next generation of leaders. The greatest dividends is from the, or are, will be from the next generation of leaders. Those in apprenticeships, internships, higher education, or going through training Good leadership practice amongst these groups will move forward an organisation when the next generation of leaders enter the workplace. And I want to talk about trust, but I'll take you back to the 4th of July, 2009. Within 20 minutes of my company crossing the start line, we came into a contact. A heavy contact, and these contacts remained throughout the rest of the day. And then it was in mid-afternoon that there was this sudden eruption of machine gun fire and several explosions were heard very close by. Almost immediately, I heard over the radio from Lieutenant Guy Dizzy, a young troop commander. Zero Alpha, contact, casualties. I think I've lost my leg. An insurgent, it was a big ambush, an insurgent had fired a rocket propelled grenade and the slug pellet from that grenade had gone straight through the back of the vehicle straight through the right leg of Guy Disney, taking it off below the knee. It then embedded itself in the chest of 19-year-old Private Robbie Lords, killing him instantly. It then set off a couple of 40 mil grenades that were in the vehicle, causing other, thankfully, minor casualties. So all my efforts, the company's efforts, were now focused on the quick and safe extraction of those casualties. And trust, trust at this point, became paramount. 
trust in Captain Owen Candy, the fire support team commander, to get forward the helicopter to extract those casualties, to coordinate the Apache attack army and helicopters to protect my men, to control the artillery fire against the enemy. Trust in Company Sergeant <coughs> Major Paul Knuckle, Paul Muckle, sorry, to control and administer the first aid to the incoming casualties. Trust, he's on there somewhere, to Sergeant Lawson, the 2IC of Guy Disney, who now had to extract those three vehicles, command them, carrying the dead and injured soldiers. And trusting me to command the whole situation. What are the benefits of trust, apart from the safe extraction of those casualties? Well, the benefits of trust are that trust inspires confidence. It makes people feel more comfortable. It makes people feel more secure. It encourages loyalty. Teams are at their most effective and cohesive when there is trust. Conversely, mistrust is very corrosive. It can very quickly cause disharmony, doubt, and selfishness amongst the group. Now I want to move on to the final aspect, which is compassion. When people go through hard times and discomfort, their ability to carry on with their lives and with their work is compromised. During my two and a half years, or during my rehabilitation, I started to refer to my old brain and my new brain. My old brain was the one that was given to, wrong. My old brain was the one that evolved with me for the first 38 years of my life. My new brain, that was the one given to me the moment I got blown up. I mean, in an instant, I became a different person, and one that I didn't like. And I focused on the negative changes, and I hated myself, and that led to depression. Compassion helped me through that. Compassion amongst the cast and crew shown towards me of Bravo 2 Sioux Company. Self-compassion, and this really was key, self-compassion which I learned during my neurological therapy. Being compassionate helps people get through hard times, helps your employees get through their hard times. It will have a lasting impact on the way those individuals view their own organizations and their role in it. Showing compassion, having compassion, generates positive emotions. It will shape or can shape the long-term attitudes and behaviors of those employees and your friends and family. Compassion creates pride, pride in the organization. Yes, we could label it corporate social responsibility. But actually what it does, it shows that you care. To care fosters loyalty. Loyalty fosters pride. Pride fosters self-respect, self-esteem, self-performance. Put all of that together and what we get is positive leadership, positive dealings with potential, positive performance. Thank you. <laughs>